I can sum up what the court wants from you in, in three words. Settle your case. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> The family, the, the California Family Code and every other family code is asked to manage and separate families. And that is a tall order for the court. Yeah. yeah. It requires that the parties make certain disclosures. Right. It requires that the, a certain amount of cooperation occur. Uh, and it requires that people act with a, a certain amount of sensibility or sensibility uh, you know, a me, uh, that they be nice. <laughs> there you go. That's a nice simple word. Yeah. Be nice. I say that all the time. Right. Be nice. Cooperation. They, right. they want you to cooperate uh, and that's because the court has uh, the court just can't do whatever it wants. Okay, the court, meaning when I say the court, a lot of times as lawyers, we refer to the judge as the court. Right. But I'm using those words interchangeably. So when sometimes when I say the court, I'm really talking about your judicial officer. Right. Uh, who's the person who has to, to decide what the truth is in right. the case and then make decisions according to the law. So they have a set of policies that they have to follow. Right. They're under the authority of the of the state legislature and its codes, right? Uh, and also, to a lesser extent, on interpretations of other judges, of higher judges called appellate judges. Right. Uh, they write opinions, and they're obligated to follow it. But this is the way courts administer policy, uh, and they have certain things that they're mandated to do. And so if you, know, if you understand that going in, uh, then you're going to have an advantage. So here's the thing. All right. So we need to be nice. So frequently people go in and they have this concept that the judge is going to do what's reasonable or the judge is going to hear what I'm doing and hear what my ex is doing and realize what a jerk they are and yeah. and decide that I should get what I'm asking for because, you know, because I'm being reasonable or because the other person's doing things they're not supposed to or whatever. Right. right. And, you know, what I try to explain to people is sort of in layman terms what you just said, like the judge is only there to do four things. They're there to decide on division of the assets and debts if you can't decide decide on your parenting schedule if you can't agree decide on your support child and spousal support if you can't agree and terminate your marital status they're not there to decide who's a jerk and then what happens when i say that to somebody is well then they're being nasty why do i need to be nice why why shouldn't i just I'll just be nasty too because if they're not going to get in trouble for lying or perjuring or or moving money or or taking the kids out of state or or whatever it is they did that they shouldn't have done or aren't supposed mm -hmm. to do under the terms of the um, initial paperwork, if they're doing all those things, then why should I not do those things? You get in this cycle where you think, well, this person. You don't think this person's having any consequence for their behavior. Right. I think that's the big perception, that you don't think they have consequence for the behavior. So, by golly, you're going to impose a consequence. Well, or why shouldn't I just do whatever I want if there's no consequence? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Uh, but the, the the fact is that the court, in, in child custody cases in particular, wants the parties to cooperate. Right. And the... the the more that the parties can cooperate and take charge, first of all, the less the child is in the middle. Right. Because the child bears the consequences of that interparental conflict. Right. Right. Uh, and, and I think a lot of times the behaviors do sort of influence the judge's decisions. I mean, they can't make a decision solely based on the behaviors that go that that aren't in line with policy or whatever but i think in applying the policy a lot of times 
those behaviors can't, I mean, the judges are human, you know, and so I think those behaviors are going to have some influence on things. You have to learn what behaviors are acceptable in court, what behaviors are not. And that's really, it's kind of like when we say you need to prepare for the you know, hope for the best, plan for the worst, right? Mm-hmm. So the reason that you're behaving well, you know, will you will you ever need that? You may not. It, you may go through the whole court process and your behavior may not matter. But if some deciding factor comes down, you know, and you need that swing in your favor, you having behaved well and done what you're supposed to do is going to help you. And I think you're right, especially in custody cases, we see the behavior issues have a much bigger impact. The court really does want to make the right decision. I mean, like Thomas said, it, it the, these judges work really hard. And, you know, people are shocked often when I say not uncommon, at least in San Diego, where we are not uncommon for a judge to have three to 4,000 open cases at any given time. And people are just like, what? You know, and they're having to remember facts and things from and, and this particular judicial officer has a mind like a steel trap because right. uh, she, she remembers everything that happens in front of her. And I have no idea how. But, um, you know, they're dealing with a lot and they do want to make the right decision. And so, you know, you can do things that make that easier for them right. and make that more likely. But you have to understand what things that, you know, they can't change the law. Right. You know, and they can't just go, oh, well, you seem like a nice person. I'm going to change the law for you. Right. You know, they don't have that power to do right. that. Well, they care. Believe it or not, they care about your kids. Right. They care. They want to make the, the decision in the case that's going to be best for this family. Right. Uh, and that's how you need to present it. What's good for this family is. Right. What's good for this child is. Right. Not... Uh, my ex is a narcissist, you, right. you know, and and you may think that he's a narcissist, but it's not going to help you to go there. That's right. to to attack, you know. And, and there are rare instances instances in which a person's psychiatric problems make them unfit parents. Right. But that's not it. Right. That's pretty extreme. And the problem is, even if somebody is a narcissist, the or whatever, or, you know, bipolar, or borderline, or whatever other label you want to put on anybody, you know, that doesn't mean that, that they're not fit to parent. You right. know, the court doesn't view that. I mean, you know, 80% of the free world has a diagnosis. We all have a diagnosis, yeah. right? But that doesn't make people unfit parents. And so it's, you know, it there are balances to all of this. All right, right. So, you know, again, I mean, I think it comes back to the thing I said in the very beginning. Preferably, the court wants you to settle your case. That's really, they want you to cooperate. They want you to settle your case. But if you're going to come in front of them asking. They want to be out of your life. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they don't want to have to decide. They really don't want. And you want them out of your life. (laughs) (laughs) They really don't want to have to decide these issues. You know, this is stressful to try and make these kind of decisions for people that you really have 20 minutes to figure out who they are and who their family is. And that's not very much time. And so they really would prefer that you settle your case And then they're not faced with the decision at all. But if you're going to come in front of them and ask them to make decisions, then you need to behave appropriately. You need to do what they're telling you to do. You need to understand why they're ordering the things that they're ordering. And you need to be brief when you're standing in front of them and not just unload your whole life history because that's not going to help them make the right decision.